So at the end of this airline here is the Thompson valve. The Thompson valve governs the amount of grit that flows from the conical section of the pot. So the Thompson valve is activated by pneumatics as well. So in the Thompson valve we've got a piston that when the air comes from the auto air valve down to the Thompson valve, the air pushes the piston in an upward position, pulls the piston off the seat and allows the grit to flow through, down through this body of the back of this Thompson valve. So the Thompson valve is quite a unique piece of engineering, primarily because it's activated by pneumatics, but also too it gives me a greater governance in relation to the amount of grit dispensation. The good part about these particular valves too is that underneath the knob there is segmentations or increments of where I am in relation to how far I've wound this knob out. How, how far do I wind it out? Well basically the best thing to do is to wind the knob in until it's home and that means until the piston is closed on the seat. Operate the dead man, you'll hear the squeal of just air. So that means that there's, it'll still allow the air to come through there, but it will stop the grit coming through. So winding that in all the way home to the seat stops the flow of grit coming from the conical section of the pot. So now what I need to do is appropriate that grit in relation to how, appropriate this knob in relation to how much grit I have coming through. So what I need to do is I need to turn this knob out three and a half to four turns. That's funny, that's what it was with the other valve. Basically it'll give you an indication of somewhere where you need to be. You'll see on this particular valve, there's a mark on there. There's nothing wrong with putting a texture mark on there to let you know where you are in relation to its operation. So three and a half to four turns, I wind that out. And it's not one, two, it's full turns I'm talking about. So wind it home until it seats and then you'll go one turn, two turns, and so on, three and a half turns. The only time that this will become problematic is that if you utilise this air system without an after cooler or air dryer, or air prep as we call them. So the air prep reduces the amount of moisture that comes through this system. This particular valve is so defined and refined that it enables me to govern the grit to such an extent that it's perfect day in, day out. The right amount of grit all the time. Every time I open the dead man, same amount of grit, day in, day out. So with an air prep on the system, you can appropriate that. That's the outcome you'll have. With moisture coming through the system with no air prep, you'll find that ultimately you'll be winding this pot, this particular valve, you'll be winding this backwards more and more to get more grit to come through. How does that happen? Well, basically, if you're pumping air in here as well as moisture, the moisture accumulates with the grit. The grit will tend to consolidate, so you'll have a spasmatic flow of grit. So it won't be even. You'll have dry grit, moisture impregnated grit, dry grit, moisture impregnated grit. So this poor valve has no idea what's going on. So ultimately, you have to keep opening the valve to get the grit to flow, to get it to run through. So it's a false economy. No, after, no air prep, no after cooler, moisture in here. You're moving this all the time. So the operator becomes frustrated with the fact that he, he's got grit, no grit, grit, no grit. All of a sudden he's got too much grit. So to appropriate this valve with the air prep in the system, once you set it, you'll find that you'll be able to leave that in the one position all the time. So remember what I said about appropriating the grit as far as Dispensation's concerned where it exits the nozzle. If you hold the nozzle up with the dead man depressed, you'll be able to watch the mantle in the end of the blast nozzle. And that's the mix of air and grit, which give a blue color. It'll be a blue color, definitive blue color when you hold the nozzle up to the light. So once you get to that, you know you're pretty right. So if I've got too much grit, you'll hear it the noise from the nozzle is dull. If I don't have enough grit, the noise from the nozzle is quite sharp. So remember in grit, with grit dispensation from a valve such as this, less is more. So don't flood what you're trying to blast with excessive grit. 
you'll find you're more productive with less grit exiting this particular valve. But as I say, if you wind out three and a half to four turns, that's about where you need to be. Also with this valve, it has a coupling on the face side of it. And again, these couplings have what we call gaskets in them. Every day you will need to check this particular gasket, every day. Primarily because where the hose is connected to this, 